Got another exam question walkthrough for the NMR playlist, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're up to number 30 now. If you wanted to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. Hope you like the video, I hope you find it helpful, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would absolutely love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start, so a really typical question this, where we've got the elemental analysis by mass, got some information from the mass spectrum, we've got an infrared spectrum, and we've got a proton NMR spectrum. And basically, we've got to come up with a feasible structure for this compound that's present in the sample of ink. So starting with that percentage composition by mass information, we can get the empirical formula, so it's just percentage divided by relative atomic mass. That gives us the moles. Dividing by the smallest gives us the ratio, but you'll notice that the carbon, we've got 2.5 there. So what we can't do is bump that up to 3. We've got to multiply out. So that means that the empirical formula for this compound is C5H10O2, and then straight away you need to be working out the MR of the empirical formula, and then we bring in that information from the mass spectrum, the molecular ion peak at M over Z102. That means the MR of the molecule is 102. And so the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. Moving on to the infrared spectrum now, there's not really a lot we can say here, apart from the fact that this um, absorption here is telling us that we've got a C double bond O in our molecule. So I'm just going to annotate the spectrum, which is what I would totally recommend that you do. The other thing we could say, just for kind of to help us get our ideas together, the fact that we've got no kind of broad absorption going on here means there's no OH in this molecule. Okay, so, but these peaks here, these are due to CHs, which you're always getting in infrared spectrum of an organic compound. So unfortunately, you don't get any credit for that, but it's helpful. Moving on to the proton NMR spectrum, you'll notice I've got this red arrow here because it does say in the information that this signal here would normally be expected 1 ppm to the right. So when we look at the um, shift value, we need to bear that in mind. So rather than being at 4.9, we're going to class it as 3.9. So starting with that signal at 4.9, it's a heptet. You can see from the expansion, you've got 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, seven peaks in the signal. So what does a heptet mean? It means there's an adjacent CH3 twice group. Um, the area means that there's one proton cause in this signal. And the shift value, remember we've got to treat the shift value as 3.9. That's indicative of H to C to single bond O. So what we can do is we can draw up that little part of the molecule so this single hydrogen bonded to the carbon, single bonded to the oxygen has caused that signal and adjacent to it are these two equivalent CH3 groups. So we've got that part of the molecule sorted. So the sensible thing to do now is to look at the other half of that splitting story. So we've already talked about this proton being split by them. So these protons are going to be split by that. And that's what we've got going on here. So this is a doublet, and that means there's an adjacent CH. Area 6, so there's 6 hydrogens causing the signal, which is obviously these two CH3 groups that are equivalent to each other, and the shift value is H to C to R. So that's what we've got here. So these 6 equivalent protons being split by that single proton there. So we just need to finish with this signal here. So you can see I've got it written up down there. So this is a singlet, and that means there's no adjacent hydrogens to the protons causing the signal. The area of 3 means it's a CH3 group that's caused the signal, and the shift of 2.2 is indicative of an H to C to C double bond O. So what it looks like we've got in this molecule is a C double bond O here, and then we've got that CH3 there. So we're talking about an ester.